Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church as we do a little 10 minute Bible study here this morning. We started the last couple of days talking about remembering, the value of remembering. And, uh, you know, as the older we get, uh, the more trouble we have remembering some things, especially things that just happened. Like, you know, where did I put my phone five seconds ago and things like that. But we're talking about right here about uh, the kind of spiritual aspect of it, the remembering what God has done for us, remember who we are and whose we are. I like to I use that for, uh, phrase a lot. Who are we? We're a child of God, right? And so then we have to remember that we who are His. We're not our own. We're bought with a price. So keeping these things in remembering. Uh, I got a card from a brother and sister up in uh, Ohio, a Christian brother and sister. And I just want to read this because we've been talking about remember. And it's kind of unique that this verse came, this card just came uh, yesterday. He says, remember the gifts sent from heaven above, wrapped in humanity, destined to love. Remember the gift that they caused angels to sing, a true a treasure worshipped by shepherds and kings. Remember that gift I gave his life on a tree, how he suffered and died to set you and me free. So as we celebrate this wonderful season, may we give thanks and remember the reason. And it's it's so true. We have a tendency, you know, as as we go through life, just in a, in a secular sense, uh, uh, the idea is we forget when people do things for us. Uh, uh, we we take advantage of people. We don't. We're not appreciative. You know how many times you hear about uh, parents sacrificing for the kids to go to school, and then the kids disregard their parents and they get a little older and that. So. You want to keep in mind the need to remember. And God's always telling this nation of Israel, He says, you know what? Remember where you were. And for you and I as a Christian, that's what we need to do. Maybe you got saved young in life, so you don't have a lot of life to think back on. But if you're like myself, you got saved later in life, you can look back at your life and remember where you were. Remember yesterday we talked about it over in Ephesians. He says over in Ephesians 2 there, He says, uh, you were once Gentiles without God, without hope. And so when we come to know Christ as our Savior, we have God and we have hope. We have a reason. We have a purpose. So I'm looking over here at Judges where we finished up uh, in our last session. And uh, we see this story of Gideon. And uh, Gideon was one of the judges helped uh, deliver Israel. And so we're looking over at Judges chapter 8 and we look at verses 33 to 35. And uh, the idea is that to remember what God tells you to do and to remember and then to do it. So let's look over here in Judges. And then chapter 8, verses 33 to 35. And it came to pass, as soon as Gideon was dead, okay, that the children of Israel, listen, the children of Israel turned again and went a whoring after Balaam and made Abel Bereth their God. And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God. See what happened? They remembered not the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies on every side. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Jeroboam, or Gideon, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. So we see, here, here they are. If we just go back and, and look at uh, this, the whole story about Gideon, here's one of the judges. If you remember the book of Judges, it's, what? it's the book of like a roller coaster. Uh, Israel is, God is, they're walking with God, they're worshiping God, they're obeying God, and all of a sudden they start their pagan worship. Okay, they get into their pagan worship, so God sends a, a nation in to judge them. And they take them into captivity. And then they, they start crying and whining around because they're in captivity. And so God hears their cry, so he sends a judge to deliver them. And that's what happened here with Gideon. Here we sent, they was in, in bondage. And so God sent his, he sent Gideon to deliver them. He gave him victory. It's a beautiful story to read the story of Gideon. But he sent Gideon to do it. And so God delivered him through Gideon. All right, so you would think, oh, wow, they, they're really going to worship God now because he just saved them. And what did they do? They went back and they worshiped the idols of the nation that's just been defeated. And you think, well, that don't make any sense. But when you stop and think about their, what they were looking for, they were looking at for physical things. And even the back then, they weren't looking at the spiritual aspects. They weren't looking at God. And so as soon as, see what happened? As soon as Gideon was dead, Israel turned again to the other gods. You know, the Bible tells us that God is a jealous God, so we need to remember, uh, they needed to remember that because God would bring judgment on them because of their Baal worship. And you and I need to remember that that uh, God has done so much for us, we need to remember what He's done for us, that, that uh, we serve Him in a way that honors Him and we don't drift into this idolatry. Okay, so you, you see what they did, not only did they turn against the Lord, they turned against Gideon's family. This shows how that the nature of people 
So we're going to just, I'm going to close out this little study. I'm going to go back over to a portion of scripture you're familiar with. And he calls for from, uh, for a, I really remember, it's back over in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we go, we read this every time we have a communion service. But uh, Jesus is telling, uh, Paul is telling, telling the people at uh, Church of Corinth that they've got into all this supper communion service, but they've, they've abused it. And so here's what uh, Paul says. He says, um, verse 23, chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians. He said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Verse 24, And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And listen to this part right here. He says, This do in remembrance of me. Verse 25, After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament, New Covenant, in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show or declare the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, verse 27, Whoso she eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. And he goes ahead and tells us to look at ourselves, to examine ourselves. But see what Jesus is telling us right there. He says, I want you to remember. And, you know, we, we talk about all the things that God has done for us in our life, how he's given us food, met, met our needs, clothing, and housing, and money, and all these kind of things, how he's blessed us. But he says, I want you to remember more than that. I want you to remember what I did for you. You know, uh, sometimes we need to be reminded what people have done for us. And that's what Jesus is saying here. He said, so what he's done, he's given us some symbols. Okay, this, this, this does not become the body and blood of the Lord, but he's given us some symbols. He gives us a little wafer or a piece of bread, however you, you want to do it. There are different communion services do it different. But he gives you something to, as a, a token. He looks at that token. He says, look, he said, this is, I want you to, when you take this, now I want you to do something. He says right here, he says, what you do? He says, uh, when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And so, and he says, this do in remembrance of me. As I think back to what he did for me, to remember. And so when we look at a communion service, and sometimes we, uh, people get through it, and they do it rather quickly. They just get, want to get through it like it's something that's a chore. But, and uh, I think that we, we celebrate communion the first Sunday of the month. Uh, that's basically what we try to do now this month. We wait until Christmas Eve at our candlelight service we do communion. But the idea is that you don't do it so much that you get flippant with it, that you just take advantage of it. And so he's telling you every time you do it, when you take that little wafer that we, we use to represent his body, he said, just imagine his body being broken for you. Just imagine what that's representative of. You know, and so then he wants us to remember that. And then he goes, goes a little further and he says that when he talks about the cup, and he says the cup, that, that, that wine juice, that, that grape juice that we use. Some use, some churches use wine. We don't do that. Uh, we use grape juice. And he said, when you take that juice, that grape juice, it's color of blood. He said, when you do that, he said, this is representative of my my blood. I want you to remember that my blood was shed not for me, not for my sins, but for your sins, for the sins of the world. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, then He for for the world. And so what he's telling us right there, he says, when you do this, remember. Just remember. Just take just take a few moments. Uh, if you take a, if you do a, a communion service, sometimes we have to go to the homes and do communion service, sometimes in the churches. But wherever you do a communion service, always keep in mind there, there's a reason that you do it. It's not to get you saved. This that does not get you saved. It's a privilege you have because you are saved. It's like baptism. Baptism doesn't get you saved. It doesn't keep you saved. But it's a privilege you have because you are saved that you get to be identified with Christ. So if you don't know Christ as your Savior, let this be the day, let this be the hour that you turn from your sin, repent. Call repentance. Not being sorry. You can be sorry for your sins, but be, repenting has nothing to do with being sorry. It means to turn and turn and go look at the Lord Jesus Christ, believing and trusting in His shed blood is payment for your sins, and you'll have eternal life. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life. We pray that we would remember how great you've been to us, Lord, through your mercy and your grace. You've saved us, Lord, and we just pray for those that don't know Christ. We pray this would be the day, that this would be the very hour that they would repent, turn to you, and receive Christ as their personal Savior. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you're going to do for us. pray in Jesus' name.